Happy Sunday morning and welcome to the Center for Spiritual Living, Sarasota, where our vision is empowering spiritual growth as a loving, inclusive, worldwide community. Hello, my name is Ron Frost, and I'm a licensed spiritual practitioner here at the Center, and I want to begin by greeting you with the word Namaste. Namaste is a Sanskrit word, which means the divinity within me recognizes, honors, and blesses the divinity within you. Now, whether you're here for the very first time and you just found us on Facebook or on YouTube or you're a longtime follower, we're simply here to awaken that divine truth that is already inside of you and help you get a closer relationship with spirit, God, whatever name you want to give it, help you get a closer relationship. And I also want to make a special announcement I'll make this announcement afterwards as well, but we're having a town hall meeting at 11 o'clock after the Sunday celebration. And if you haven't already RSVP'd, you want to do that because that's how you get the Zoom link so you can join us. Please RSVP at this moment at cslsarasota at gmail.com and we'll send you the Zoom link so you can join in afterwards. And now let's just take a moment to, to quiet ourselves, to just let go of the outer world, the outer chatter, the outer hamster wheel of life, and, and just sit deeply into this now moment and breathe and allow yourself to feel calm, feel relaxed, and it'll soften your glaze or, or close your eyes and be with this musical moment as Bob and Jay share with us a beautiful Eddie Watkins song called God Is, I Am. God is, I am. I am one with this infinite source. As I know the one truth that back behind all life, no matter what life may look like on the surface level and back behind all life is God is strength is love is beauty is abundance is well-being is joy 
and as God is, I am. I am one with all the qualities, all the expression, all the love of the one thing that we know as spirit, as divine life, as God. And in this now moment, I allow the fullness of this expression of God, of joy, of love, of peace, of prosperity, of well-being, and of the expression of my highest and best. I surrender in gratitude, knowing these truths, embracing these truths, living these truths. And so it is. And now let me welcome back once again, Reverend Christine Green. As you may already know, she is our interim minister and she's been helping us out quite a bit. And she has a very special message today called Root and Reboot the universal voice. Let me share a little bit about Reverend Christine. Uh, she finds her inspiration in empowering others to grow beyond their limitations and discovers their inner strength and courage. She lives in Portland, Oregon, and is an author, facilitator, speaker, and a Center for Spiritual Living ordained minister. She has a background in business, education, and a master's in religious studies, Christine finds her joy in offering seminars, workshops, and retreats, providing participants with tools and practices to expand their awareness and to overcome life's obstacles. So welcome, Christine, Reverend Christine Green with Root and Reboot, the universal voice. But before we hear from Reverend Christine, here is Jay and Bob once again with a Lou Dotty song titled Rhythm of the Lord. Welcome, Jay and Bob. In the 
the rhythm of the Lord. How can there be evil when there is only God? There can be no evil trespass on my brother knowing we are one brother sister God we're all the same our mother God our father God who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. I must be holy, for everywhere I go, you are there with me always. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on this earth. And this surely must be heaven As I live and move And breathe and have my being In the rhythm of the Lord In the rhythm of the Lord Good morning, everyone. I'm Reverend Christine Green. Thank you so much for joining us today. I am so grateful to be here with you. I uh, thank you for the beautiful meditation. And I wanna thank everyone on our Sunday morning team that helped make this live stream possible for everyone. So thank you. I'm so glad you chose to join us today. Just a reminder, please log on to Zoom immediately after the service at 11 a.m. for our town, our special town hall meeting to talk about the future for CSL Sarasota. You can find the information on our website. Uh, it's really an important meeting and we would love to have you present at, there on Zoom. So I look forward to seeing you there. Jim Grove did such a great job last week of setting the stage for our month-long look into the Center for Spiritual Living global theme, Root and Reboot. And so this week, my talk title is The Universal Voice. From the our declaration of principles that you can find in the CSL magazine, we believe in the individualization of spirit in us and that all people are individualizations of the one spirit. So we believe that spirit is individualized through each one of us and that that's available to everyone everywhere. I don't know about you, but I didn't always believe that or have that understanding. And so I remember, I recalled a snowy uh, afternoon, late afternoon when I was around 10 years old, growing up in upstate New York. And my sister and I were watching 
TV and my mom was preparing dinner in the kitchen. Well, she kept pacing. And so she would go from the kitchen to the living room, looking out the window. And when she did that, she walked in front of the TV. And I watched her do that several times. And then I said, what are you looking for? And she said, well, this snow has turned into a storm and I'm worried about your dad coming home. He had a, a long drive home from work. And so I watched her pace and then I thought I better pace with her. So I paced with her and I could feel her tension and her worry. So I paced and worried alongside her. And then being a good Catholic uh, girl, I decided to pray. Now, my prayer at the time was usually took the form of kind of like, let's make a deal with God. So I prayed that my, if God would bring my dad home safely, then I would stop um, badgering my sister. I would do my homework on time and a number of other deals that I made in order to make this go through. So I paced for a while. And then finally, um, my dad pulled into the driveway and we were so excited to see him and glad that he was home that I immediately forgot all about my deal and never kept up with my end of the bargain. So I believed at the time that God was someone separate from me, a being that granted wishes or prayers, and that that's how to pray. So years later, as an adult, when I was introduced to science of mind, I was so excited because it was a different understanding that God was not a being or and, and did not grant wishes, but that God was the presence of that, this divine energy, this creative process, this infinite invisible, that God was the divine energy of the universe. And so it moved from this very narrow point of view to this expansion. And it was really very exciting. And so even though I knew that, and even though I had a technique, a spiritual mind treatment to follow, I still found there were those days where there was a particular health challenge or crisis that I would go back to beseeching God, asking God, please help me. Please give me this one thing. Because I was still feeling separate. It took many years of study to undo those years of programming, to observe the world in a new way. Ernest Holmes tells us in this thing called you to realize that God is ever present, ever available, is to know that all the wisdom, intelligence, and power of the universe is right where you are. Your word is power when you know this. This is why everything in your life depends upon your belief and why it is done unto you as you believe. Change your belief and you can change the world. Hmm. I moved in my own work from seeing God as that being granted, granting wishes to understanding this universal presence. And I learned through science of mind that I was building a relationship with God. I was building on this knowing, this knowingness of this presence, of understanding this, and of understanding that all of this is based on universal love. From uh, Marianne Williamson, she says, think of the universe itself as a personal love note from God to you. God is love. 
and sharing God's love, you share God's power, that God is the presence of love. And that as we have that understanding, all is love. As we share love, we share that power of God. And from the mystic Emma Curtis Hopkins, she says, everything is really full of love for you. The good that is for you loves you as much as you love it. The good that is for you seeks you and will come flying to you if you see that what you love is love itself. Is love itself because love is my awareness of oneness with all life. So I see the oneness of life is the presence of love. So I deepen in this understanding that God is love. I am one with God and God is love. So there's no separation between me and the presence of God, between me and the presence of love. So I can know this intellectually, and you probably know this intellectually, but there are days that that's hard to grab onto. Can you relate to that? Some days that whole concept can seem light years away from reality. So what takes us out of love? Self-judgment, where we say, I'm not capable, I'm not smart, where we judge our looks, our thinking, our behavior, where we believe we're not smart enough or qualified enough. And we're so busy judging ourselves that we don't take time to appreciate what we have. And I often ask my students and clients, would you say those things that you say to yourself? Would you say that to your best friend? We would never think of saying that, but we say those things to ourselves. So it's really important to embrace who we are, to love our pain, our shortcomings, our quirks, our mistakes. And I love myself because I'm willing. I love myself because I'm trying. I love myself because I am the expression of God through me. We just have to be willing and God will take care of the rest. Spirit will take care of the rest. Another thing that keeps us from feeling that presence of love is resentment. And resentment is that place where someone did something and we hang on to it. We hang on to what they did. We hold on to that pain and that suffering. And we tell the story over again. I, I, this friend was telling me this experience with her neighbor and what her neighbor did that was dishonest and very hurtful. And she was feeling frustrated and pained by this experience. And I said, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. When did this happen? Was this recently? And she said, no, this happened around 1992. <laughs> oh, I thought, why are you still telling the story? The more we repeat the story, we stay in the past, we stay in the hurt. And that leads us to suffering. And there's two kinds of suffering. There's inevitable suffering. And that suffering, pain is part of the human condition. We stub our toe, it hurts. We have a paper cut, ouch, that hurts. Bump my head, that hurts. That's inevitable suffering. That's part of living in a body. But then there's optional suffering. And optional suffering is what I tell myself about the hurt. When I react to an experience. So I might have pain or an illness and I react to it. Well, how did I create this? Or what did I do wrong to have this happen to me? That optional suffering is what we are telling ourselves about our suffering. So this friend, the more she told the story, she stayed in suffering. So what happens when we tell these stories, it takes us 
out of the moment and drops us into emotional conflict. And then we lose our mindfulness. We lose that awareness. It's important that we pay attention to what's, what are the facts? What's really happening here? Did this person who said that, were they trying to hurt me or they were reacting to something? If I can have the facts, well, maybe they were having a bad day. Maybe they really didn't mean to be mean. That wasn't their intention. Then I can move myself out of the story and back into the presence of love. So how do we stay in that place of love? It seems some days like a challenge. This is where we can root and reboot, which is our practice this month. We can root into spiritual, into the spiritual principle. And to be rooted is grounded. We can ground ourselves in the spiritual principle. So spirit, one of the spiritual principles is whatever I put my attention on increases. We tend to focus on what's not working, right? Most of humanity does that. We look at what's not working. So the self-criticism, the judgment, the self-condemnation, we focus on the issues that we don't want in our lives or the things that aren't working out in our lives. I love what Ernest Holmes says. He says, if you want sunshine, step out into the sunshine. If you have locked away yourself in a dark closet, why not come out into the light? If you have been feeling that everything is against you and no one cares for you, know that God, that spirit is in everyone and meet the God in others and see what happens. See what happens. Meet the God in everyone, knowing that this, this understanding that spirit is everywhere is in everyone. Meet the God in everyone and see what happens to your experience. Move out of the shadows and the doubt. Move into the light of awareness. Take the, your attention off the problem and put it on God instead. Put your attention on what you vision for yourself, not on what's not working, but on what you want instead. Okay, the second principle to root in is whatever I take responsibility for, I can change. Ernest says that realizing that all action starts in and is a result of consciousness, prepare your mind to receive the best that life has to offer. Become increasingly aware of the one presence, the one life, and the one spirit that is God. Drop the sense of lack or limitation. And here's where we're responsible. Responsibility means the ability to respond. No one can do this work for us. And we can't will it or wish it away. That no one's going to magically erase it. That false belief, that old idea. Each of us has to do our own work, our own, have our own understanding of principle, have our own understanding of spirit and how it works in the world. We have to look at the old patterns from the past, the old experiences and beliefs that we take responsibility, we look at them, and we can shift them into something new. Ernest also says, there is something within you which is completely aware of its oneness with power, of its unity with life. Lose all thoughts of discord and fear and permit the true pattern to come to the surface. So there's something in us that's aware of that, 
But we have to do that work. We have to do that practice. So important for us to have a spiritual practice that keeps us grounded in that principle. We can also take responsibility and say, what can I do to change this situation? What can I do to see this situation differently? And maybe there's something I can change, a new way of looking at it. Make a list of action items that you want to take in the new year that's taking responsibility. So the third reboot is the spiritual principle, whatever I am grateful for increases. And Eric Butterworth says, a grateful heart draws to itself great things. We're we are going to talk more about gratitude later in the month, but begin today. Move into a place of gratitude, that place of deep appreciation for whatever is happening in life right now. Butterworth goes on to say, before you react in negativity to people, to conditions or things, take a moment and lift your eyes up to the hills. Lift your eyes up, contemplate all the changing, challenging experiences from the highest place possible, from that highest point of view. Regardless of the appearances of conflicts or limitations, see all things from the awareness of oneness of life. From the view from the top, you will see things creatively leading to the attitude that is constructive and optimistic. Isn't that a great idea? Is lift our awareness from the highest place possible and look down and see what the conditions are and how they can be changed. So begin today living from a place, acknowledging from a place of gratitude paying attention to that. We look for the good in every challenge and it shifts our attitude and the experiences in our life. So we consciously root and reboot when we remember our oneness with God, with the infinite presence of love. Focus and pay attention to the qualities that we attribute to spirit. We have qualities that we attribute that spirit is hard to, to understand that creative energy, but we know these qualities are the expression of spirit in the world. Qualities like peace, love, joy, vitality, abundance. Emmett Fox has a beautiful explanation of this. He says, love transmutes into human relationships of all kinds. Vitality is the root of health and well being. Joy is the passion that sustains ideas from inception to fulfillment. Peace is mental stability and the source of optimism. Supply is everything from money to molecules. I love that. Supply is everything from money to molecules. Dr. Carol Carnes reminds us in the Science of Mind magazine, she said, in this world of quantum physics and the new science, God is feeling more like a quivering field of intelligence and love than a far off being. The field responds to what is known in it, coalescing the known into visibility. So what we know, what we put into the field is how we make that connection. And that's what we demonstrate out into the world. So we have the opportunity to tap into this creative source every day. Every morning as we wake up, we can have a, a thought for a new day, 
for a new idea, for a new awareness. And what will happen is it expands our intention and our willingness to grow. All the good of the universe is waiting for us. It's our intention to step into the flow. So let's take this into prayer. So knowing and recognizing that that in, in, infinite, invisible, that divine presence, that creative process is good, is God. And it is a process that moves in and through and as each one of us. There is no place where God is not. And so knowing that, understanding that, feeling that, connecting with that, I know that this good is in all things everywhere. And that this presence is the power that moves through all of us to bring into fruition all that we desire, all that we hold into our hearts. So I lift my awareness, I lift my oneness, I lift my energy and vitality into that field of infinite invisible this day. I know that as I go out into the world, and I know for all of us, as we go out into the world, we take this good with us. We expand this teaching, this awareness, and this presence of love. I'm so grateful for today, for this work, for this knowledge, for this awareness, for this teaching, and these principles. I'm so aware, so thankful for everyone here today. I give grateful thanks for all of this good and for so much more. And I release this word with deep gratitude, knowing that it's already done. And we release it and set it free. And so it is. Blessings for a beautiful day. sad the other day, feeling sorry for myself. I had to take a walk to clear my head. I went down to the river. The water always soothes my soul. The current seems to wash my cares away. The beauty flows right through and I'm a part of everything I see So alive, astounded by the majesty I see So alive, awake to all the possible in me So alive to the magic So alive to the dreams Discovering that life is so much more than what it seems I cannot be content to just survive I'm a part of something infinite and free And so alive Sometimes when I'm discouraged I go and see a friend And hold her little baby in my arms No words can describe this He's perfect and he's pure And all of life's distractions fall away The beauty flows right through and I'm a part of everything I see So alive, astounded by the majesty I see So alive, awake to all the possible in me So alive to the magic, so alive to the dreams Discovering that life is so much more than what it seems I cannot be content to just survive I'm a part of something infinite and free 
and so alive Then sings my soul How great thou art Then sings my soul So alive, astounded by the majesty I see So alive, awake to all that's possible in me So alive to the magic, so alive to the dream Discovering that life is so much more than what it seems I will not be content to just survive I'm a part of something infinite and free And so alive Thank you, Reverend Christine, for that wonderful message Root and Reboot, the Universal Voice, and Jay and Bob for wrapping it up with that beautiful song by Michael Gott, So Alive. Thank you once again. Well, here at the Center for Spiritual Living, Sarasota, we want you to know that we are available to support you in knowing the power and presence of your spiritual essence. We offer support through prayer, inspiration, encouragement, and opportunities for virtual community and connection. And we really appreciate your financial gifts in support of us so we can continue to offer that support to you. There are three simple ways to share your gift. On your screen, you'll see our website where you can select the donate button, which allows you to contribute via PayPal or credit card, or you can mail a check to our address shown here on the website, or set up automatic contributions through your own online banking. By selecting the donate button, you can it'll take you right into PayPal directly for credit card or PayPal processing. Is I all this is at cslsarasota.com. And now I invite you to take your virtual gift in your hand and place it over your heart blessing it as you share it and know with me, my gift goes forth to heal, to bless, and to prosper. And the divine flow returns it to me, multiplied abundantly. And now I would like to invite you in joining me in our offering affirmation, which is shown on your screen. I give thanks that I may share of my good, my love, and my support. Thank you so much. Would you like prayer support? Do you have a request? Well, on our website, which once again is www.cslsarasota.com, notice the green prayer request button, which allows you to send us your prayer request. Our five licensed practitioners, Kathleen Frankard, Nicole Leeds, Sean Scanlon, Jim Grove, and myself, stand by ready to know and affirm spiritual truth with and for you, no matter what the situation. And did you know that these gifted practitioners are also available for spiritual coaching sessions by appointment? These offer the opportunity to explore a deeper understanding and practical application of the spiritual truth that eclipses your problem or challenging issue. For more information, check out their page on our website by selecting the staff tab on the left and then choosing practitioners. Would you like news about upcoming events? Sign up for our weekly email newsletter, which is also here on our website, or check out our Facebook link or YouTube channel for more information. Now I have two announcements. As I shared earlier, today at 11, which is coming up in just a few moments, is our special town hall meeting where we'll be discussing 
the future opportunities for CSL Sarasota. And we would really love for you to be there. So if you haven't already, quickly RSVP by emailing cslsarasota at gmail.com and we'll send you the Zoom link right back so you can be on at 11. Looking forward to seeing you there. And so popular every Wednesday from 7 to 8 p.m. are our spiritual living circles via Zoom and they're open to all. They're facilitated by our spiritual practitioner, Jim Grove, and this is a great time to connect in community. These circles are informal, inspiring, thought-provoking, and free. Email Jim Grove at the address shown on your screen to receive this week's Zoom link and discussion questions and a copy of the Science of Mind article that will be discussed. This week, this article this week is Embracing the Vision of Living Out Loud. And now as we conclude this sacred time together, let us set the intention to move forward into our day and week ahead with peace and love. And I invite you to join in in singing our closing song together, Let There Be Peace on Earth. The words are on your screen. Thanks for being with us and have a wonderful week, everyone. on earth.